In today's Pro Bike Check, we're checking out a very fast Rocky Mountain altitude. Belongs to Jesse Melamed, and he actually raced this bike to victory at the 2020 race in Finale Liguri. Over to Neil to check out the bike. So this is the bike that Jesse's been riding for a few months now. He actually won the first round of VWS this year in Zermatt on this very bike. But prior to that, he'd had it for a few months and raced those three Crankworx events back to back. So he's already spent a bit of time on this bike. And as you can see, Enduro is a, quite a cruel mistress on these bikes. So there's a few war wounds here and there. You can see the pedals, how they've taken a few knocks, but it's a, already a well-used bike. So let's take a look at some of the details. It's a 160mm travel bike, this 29er wheels, running the bigger forks, uh, the Fox 38, so the bigger Enduro uh, stanchions on there, the 38 compared to 36, 170mm on the front. You'll see a couple of custom parts, especially on the back end of this bike. So you see this flip chip on the shock, that basically gets the curve leverage about the same as a Rocky Mountain Slayer. Same on the back, uh, this bike comes as standard with a flip chip in here, so you either have the choice of sort of short or long wheelbase, or chain stage should I say. But actually, uh, Jesse's running this one right in the middle, which does actually run that chain stay about the same length as the Slayer as well, that Jesse spent a lot of time this winter on. Up to the bars, uh, Jesse's running race face next carbon bars, 35 mil rise, fairly narrow actually, 740. Uh, Jesse's not a massive guy by any means, so he keeps them nice and compact. I think that's definitely an advantage. If you don't mind riding the narrow bars, some of the, the race courses you ride, especially in Europe, are pretty narrow here in Finale, ducking around trees. It's got to help a little bit. Uh, he's also running these rental grips, so standard grips, they're not lock on, look like they've been trimmed down to me. Fairly narrow on these. They are wired on, actually got a zip tie there as well, just to stop them spinning if any moisture gets underneath there. Got the one-up uh, uh, tool in the steerer. Got quite a few spaces actually on top of the stem. One underneath, two or three big ones on top. So definitely room to play around with that height of the bars. Uh, Shimano parts on this bike, XCR brakes. Got a race face lever running the Fox transfer dropper post. Race face turbine wheels. You can see they're asymmetric. So actually the, the spokes sit off on the drive side just a little bit on that rim. Uh, alloy rim on there, not carbon. 200mm rotors on those Shimano XCR brakes. It's a carbon frame. Many Enduro riders are going for coils uh, just for that small bump sensitivity as much as anything. You can see uh, just below his bottle cage is this sort of black wrapped thing there in electrical tape. Uh, that's actually Tubalito, so those super lightweight inner tubes that you might need in an emergency. Also down here you can see this sort of nice little uh, plastic guard the loam shield stop basically mud getting into this part of the rear end sort of getting down to those main bearings but there's a little insert there that jesse's made out of a shoe insole to stop anything else getting down in there cool little sticker down here it says built by matto at matto rides and you can see the fox transfer post that's 175 mil travel or drop should i say absolutely slammed into the frame so that must be absolutely perfect uh running the wtb silverado saddle Drivetrain, Shimano XDR, got the Crank Brothers Mallet E pedals. I'm not quite sure if they're the LS version, they might be the, the shorter spindle ones, I can ask Jesse. Uh, yes, so XDR rear mech, as you expect, see a bit of damage there, it's been dragged around a rock. You may notice uh, it's got a smaller cassette, so not going for that 1051. Smaller 1045, so obviously not going for the, the bigger range cassette. That is a 32 tooth chainring up front as well. Looks like Jesse is running the Cushcore front and rear. Max's tyre's got an Asagai uh, 29 2.5 up front, and that is a Minion DHR2 29 25 on the rear. Couple of little details. Uh, Jesse's running an angle set in here. You can see it's slightly offset at the top. So it's a minus one degree. Uh, he reckons it's about a 64 degree head angle now. Also, you might be able to just see the shape of this grip. He actually runs eight layers of electrical tape on the sort of inside the palm area of this grip almost to make it like a sort of conical shape a little bit to make it a bit more comfortable. Jesse, we've been checking out your bike. There's a few nice touches to it. Um, you run in pretty narrow bars. Is that something for enduro because you're trying to get around narrow trails? Yeah, definitely over the years. I think I started at maybe 760 and then I've 
down to 740. I tried 730, I think, at one point. Um, I do have pretty, like, narrow shoulders, but it is, like, when you're racing through these tight trails for so long, having a few extra mils just mentally allows you to attack a little bit harder, for sure. Okay, and you're running the pretty slammed stem for this weekend, especially? Yeah, yeah, you can see the spaces on top of my stem that usually I kind of use at home or some steeper tracks, but for now, I've got a lot of long, flat corners, and I really try to bring my weight down here and get weight out of that front wheel for maximum traction. And is this the tyre combo that you run regularly? Uh, was it yeah. a Mini DHR and an Asagai in the yeah, front? Yeah, DHR 2 in the back, Asagai in the front, DH double down, uh, two fives. Yeah, 99% uh, of the time, I would say. Uh, I swapped to a shorty in the front uh, for a Zermatt because of the mud, but no, these, this tyre combo is really good. So a tougher, a thicker tyre on the rear, but yeah. Kushko front and rear? Uh, we've been experimenting, kind of going Kushko, no Kushko, Kushko XC. Uh, undecided for this weekend because there seems to be a lot of pedaling. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I've run Kushko on my tires for uh, since my win in 2017, three years. And you'd only take it out to save weight, I presume? Save weight, yeah. I really like the way the Kushko rides. I think it's uh, definitely a pretty good performance enhancement. I can run really low tire pressures with that. Okay, nice. Um, running the bigger four pot brake front and rear, is that something you like? They're pretty powerful, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I was one of the lucky ones. Me and Richie got these brakes uh, before they were launched, and I couldn't believe the power difference from the Saint to these and just the modulation, really. Like, that's the biggest thing for me is the modulation of the power, and I'm not the biggest guy, so I this is plenty of power for me. Alloy rims, spe specific choice of yours, or are they just something you run? Yeah, it's definitely a sore spot leading the race in Madeira, I think, 2017, and my carbon wheel blew up. Uh, since then, it's kind of been hard to trust carbon, but I do just like the give of an alloy. There's so many, you know, if you're on a downhill course, you know exactly where you're going and you know where you're pushing. Sure, carbon's sweet, but for here, you're getting offline, you're getting kicked out everywhere, the track changes. I just like this to be able to kind of like weave through the line. You, you even, or I even hear of some pros, you know, playing around with tension on spokes. Yeah. I mean, for all about how their wheels feel, is that mm -hmm. something you've ever tried? Yeah, yeah, we're definitely working on that. Definitely not stopping uh, any testing and, and research. Uh, something that we're kind of looking more into, but it's kind of tough, like, Enduro is a durability game. So for sure, in down, you can, get, you can get away with a loose wheel set for one lap, but we got to do five stages in a day, and it's kind of a little bit uh, scary to go out there for that long. Um, you've gone on the fairly small side, I guess. They are enduro pedals, but we see some people running downhill pedals. They look like the, the shorter spindle ones yeah. as well. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Short spindle or normal spindle, I would say, of the Mallet yeah. E's. Uh, I mean, yeah, back in the day, I used to run the egg beaters and have super weird uh, shoe pedal combinations. I feel like this for me is big, uh, but it allows me to just kind of take my foot out and uh, not have to get it right back in if I need to. So we've been down the road, Pietro. We're here in Finale. Always a pretty physical race. Do you, uh... <laughs> <So good. laughs> That's all. Awesome. Just casual lifestyle down here. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we've been down the road in Pietro de Guru here in Finale. Always a fairly physical race. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you'll do to your bike to get it ready for this different, uh, you know, physical race? Yeah, that's the thing with the, the wheel setup basically is kind of figuring out the best balance. It's actually super jagged here. The rocks are super harsh. Uh, they slice tires and then it's also, yeah, it's always physical. There's always some jank thrown in. Um, so I'm not sure yet. We'll have to wait until we see the trails, but you never know what they're going to throw at you here. I've seen the trails. There's definitely a couple of uh, tricky bits and short punchy climbs yeah. when you're already going to be pretty revved out, I reckon. Yeah, it's usually that that's the way, but I think for me, I like to just dial in my bike and not touch too much throughout the season even. Like, yeah, you'll change things for weather and certain courses, but I just like to know how my bike is going to react, and I think that's the easiest way to ride confident. Cool. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, thanks for letting us look at your bike. And uh, as ever, you can check out all the EWS coverage over on GMBN. Cheers.